Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so that potential buyers can learn more about the business and the seller to help them make an informed buying decision. If you would like to learn more about this business, including details like what type of business it is, how much revenue and profit it makes, and all of the assets included with the business, simply visit empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for this business's listing number, which you can find in the video thumbnail and in the description. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. So without further ado, let's get into this interview. First up, let's learn a little bit about you. Can you tell us about your background in building and running online businesses? Hi there. So I started this business back in 2017. And this was my first online business. I got into this because I had a buddy who I was living with at the time. And he gave me the idea of selling things on Amazon because his uncle was doing that quite successfully. So that sounded like a really good idea to me. So I didn't have an uncle to learn from. So I had to go out and find an online education company that could teach me how to sell things on Amazon. And that's what I did. And I used their program to launch my first product inside of this store. And over the years, I launched many products inside of this store. Some of them did very, very well. And these are the ones that are still in the store today. And other ones did not do so well. And that is generally because A, it was my first time learning this process and B, the methodologies that this online education company was teaching me were, in hindsight, a little bit outdated. But yeah, I've since gone on to create many other online businesses, but this one was my first. Why are you selling the business now instead of keeping it and growing it further? I am selling this business for a few reasons. So the first would be that I have branched out into a lot of other areas in my business, one of which is coaching, specifically e-commerce coaching and e-commerce coaching for Amazon. So that all started quite a few years ago when the education company that I mentioned previously hired me as a coach to help them once I started having success with the products that I have in my store. And once I started doing that, you know, I really got more passionate about helping people sell things on Amazon than actually selling things on Amazon myself. And I want to show my students that this is a possible exit if that is something they want to do. That is kind of it's like a full circle thing in terms of here's how you start the business and here's how you exit the business if you do wish to do so down the line. So that is the main first reason. And secondly, with those students, I want to start a fresh brand with them down the line in a more cohort teaching style where we're doing it week by week together. So that is the second reason, kind of wanting to start something fresh down the line. And the third reason is I've had these products for so many years now. And, you know, the niche is just something I think I've outgrown. I fell into the niche by accident when these products started hitting really well. And it's not exactly a niche that I'm super passionate about. Not that that's, you know, essential or anything, but I'd rather branch off into something I think where I can express a little bit more creativity. Can you describe the amount and the type of work that you do on this business to maintain it? I really do very little work at this point in time on this business, probably one to two hours a week. And that's largely due because these products are so well, you know, embedded into the algorithm and ranking organically for all the different search terms that I needed for that. I don't need to spend too much time trying to, you know, climb to the top of the mountain, as it were. I just go in once a week and I optimize any sort of PPC that may have gotten out of hand, but it's pretty dialed in at this point. And just, you know, keep an eye on my inventory. I will communicate with my supplier when I need the next order, monitor any shipments that might be coming in. But at this point in time, it's become very, very hands off, which was always the goal. When I had more products in my store that weren't doing so well, I was spending a lot more time trying to optimize those. 
But, you know, looking at my P&L over the years, I decided to shave a lot off in terms of what I was selling and focus on what was really selling well. And the things that are selling well require very, very little maintenance. So if you were to keep this business, what are some of the ways you were trying to grow it? If I were to keep this business and continue to grow it, I would really just focus on the two particular sub niches that I have inside of my store still. Those products do really, really well. They're very simple. And there's so many other different types of the same things that exist on Amazon, not just in this overall category, but in other categories as well. So there's a lot of opportunity without branching too far out in terms of sourcing. A lot of these products can be sourced from my existing supplier and the other supplier that I've worked with for many years as well. So there's lots of opportunity just for these two sub niches on Amazon. And when it comes to competition, there is a relatively low bar in terms of quality of listing and quality of product a lot of the time as well. So focusing on those two niches would be a very easy way to scale up without branching off in too many unknown directions. And yeah, the two particular sub niches that I've launched in my still exist in my store are the best ones that have worked for me. I've launched other products in the overall category, but I have always come back these two types of products because they just do really well. They're very simple and there's great margins as well. Right. And what would you say are the biggest risks with this business that buyers should be aware of? The biggest risk I would say these days of selling on Amazon is the possibility that Amazon themselves might come in as a competitor and undercut you on pricing. I've seen this happen with some of my students just in you know different categories across Amazon. It is super rare, so it doesn't happen that often. But it can happen because, you know, obviously Amazon can get really good deals on sourcing and they can also, you know, avoid the fees on their own platform, as it were. So that can be a risk. But what I have found over the years is that a lot of people talk about the increased competition as being the biggest risk. But there's also increased, you know, buyers on Amazon every year. So I'm not too worried about that. And the reason I'm not worried about Amazon adjacent to that is that if you really focus on your product and focus on the buyer and really come in with a truly standout product in terms of quality, not only quality, but also unique selling points, and couple that with a really good listing, even if there's increased competition and people are undercutting the pricing, if you really do have the best possible product in the market and you have the best offer, then people will still gravitate towards your listing because you'll have really good reviews and you will just showcase your value to that buyer. So if people are undercutting you, a lot of the time, it doesn't even matter. That is a risk. Amazon coming in, I would say, but it really doesn't happen all that often. And if it does, just make sure you got a good product. How much support are you willing to offer the buyer who acquires this business? I'm willing to provide as much support as needed after the sale for, let's say, 30 to 60 days during the transition, helping you out with you know any sort of administrative support, logistical support, connecting you with suppliers and all that sort of stuff. So you know, I understand that it's going to be a bit of a process. I do keep everything very organized, so it shouldn't be any problem to have a relatively smooth transition. But I will be available for, let's say, yeah, 30 to 60 days after the sale to help you out with any sort of you know issues or questions you might be having in the Amazon account or in the niche, or I really doubt you'll have any issues with my supplier. But yeah, anything you need, I will be there for you because, hey, at the end of the day, all I do is support Amazon sellers. <laughs> it's a full-time job for me. And yeah, I'm always on calls with clients helping them out with their businesses. So it won't be any different for you. Are you open to negotiating something like an earnout agreement? I am always open to hearing ideas, but based on what I want to achieve and what I want to invest in over the next six months to a year, I'm not sure an earnout payment structure would make the most sense for my business. Okay, final question. If you had to put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why is your business a business worth buying? I think this business is worth buying because it's a very, very simple niche. I've worked really hard to build up the brand name on Amazon. And the brand name itself is a searched key term. People are looking for my products. There is huge growth potential for other products you can launch in that niche. When it comes to the quality of competition, 
as I've mentioned before, it's an extremely low bar. And the benefit of the sourcing agent slash suppliers that I will connect you with is they have access to all these products at incredible prices. So it's a very scalable brand and it is a boring niche as well. And sometimes on Amazon, boring is beautiful. That's the reason I got into this in the first place was the simplicity of the market. So I think there's a lot of opportunity to grow without you know reinventing the wheel necessarily. So there's huge opportunity, very, very reasonable competition with low quality a lot of the time, great margins and yeah, very scalable. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this business is still for sale, head over to empireflippers.com forward slash marketplace and search for this business listing number, which you can find in the video thumbnail and description. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll find everything you need to know about this business. So thanks for joining us. See you next time.